Hello, uh, my name is Brendan O'Farrell. I'm the president and founding partner of DCN Diagnostics. And I'm Pat Vaughan. I'm the chief operating officer here at DCN and I run all the, our development programs. A rapid diagnostic test or an RDT uh, is a test that is used at the point of sampling. Right? So there are many, many applications for, for RDTs, everything from infectious disease testing to testing for biomarkers for chronic diseases. They're used in an enormous number of market spaces in, in agriculture, in veterinary diagnostics, as well as obviously clinical diagnostics, uh, in biodefense, in chemical defense, in industrial health and safety, in food testing. Uh, it's a very well established uh, technology. Historically, it's been point of care tests or RDTs have been focused on a platform known as, as lateral flow. Uh, and lateral flow is a method uh, similar to most people would be familiar with a, with a pregnancy test. Um, it's a technology basically that allows us to take a sample, run it through a testing system without any external infrastructure. We don't need any equipment, we don't need pumps, uh, we don't need qualified uh, laboratory technicians to run it. So they're very straightforward tests. Um, they can use an enormous number of biological samples, so we can use, run, run them with everything from whole blood to saliva to nasopharyngeal swabs to stool, cerebrospinal fluid, you name it, pretty much any biological sample can be run uh, on one of these tests very effectively. So they represent a platform that can be quickly developed, quickly deployed, quickly manufactured, uh, and there's an enormous amount of experience around this platform. Uh, so it's not, it's not new to regulators, it's not new to users, it's not new to manufacturers. So as a result, it's a very effective tool in this kind of a situation where we have to get tests developed quickly, get them deployed very quickly, and get them used in situations where uh, it may be focused on untrained users rather than clinical laboratory technicians, even home use. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's one of the major uh, advantages that they have, that they're, by design, they're very, very easy to use. So they can be deployed in any uh, sort of uh, scenario. So um, doctors, nurses can use them, but anybody, we, we can, you can train anybody to use those as a very set of simple instructions to use them. Uh, and most uh, people like first responders, for instance, are used to using these types of tests. So again, easily deployed, especially uh, under current cir circumstances. So, yeah, I suppose one of, one of the questions that, that comes up a lot is, um, you know, can rapid diagnostic tests be uh, implemented in an environment where we want to digitally capture results uh, and utilize that data for epidemiology or for, um, you know, for the myriad purposes that, that we need it right now? And of course, the great, the great advantage in this kind of a, a scenario uh, in the pandemic situation is the ability to generate results on the spot uh, while the patient is still in the presence of a physician uh, and results are generated almost instantaneously within a few minutes. Uh, and as a result, we can, through the use of serology testing particularly, uh, assist in identification of asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic cases that otherwise might go on uh, spreading the, the virus while waiting for a central laboratory test to come back. Uh, and it can also be used in, in case tracking and, and contact tracking. Uh, it can be a very, very effective tool in this kind of a situation. You know, if, if the big emphasis uh, at the moment is on flattening the curve, I mean, that's going to be key. So, you know, we've all been advised to, you know, social distancing. Uh, that's one thing. But if, uh, if uh, when, when rapid tests are employed and we now can tell who's infected, they immediately can be quarantined and and you know it's just not relying on social distancing whereas you know now categorically that a person is positive so that they are carrying the virus and can spread it they can be immediately uh, self-quarantined so that that's going to further increase our ability to flatten that curve and in fact one, one of the reasons that social distancing uh, is so important right now is the fact that these tests are not yet deployed once those tests are deployed it becomes uh, possible and essential to identify those asymptomatic and mild cases very early and in that way prevent uh, rapid spread of the of the disease as you say flatten the curve uh, and ultimately this should lead to to better control of the situation so i think one of the things that has become quite evident in this situation is the need for more effective uh, results tracking 
so epidemiology uh, requires it and the technology exists to do it. So one of the things that historically people have considered a, a bit of a failing of you know, patient side testing is the ability to capture results, um, do centralized reporting uh, and you know, all of the things that we want to see now related specifically to, to, to this outbreak. Um, generation of, of instantaneous heat maps and really understanding how, how the thing is spreading. Uh, that is all very, very possible with lateral flow technology, with RDTs. Um, you know, there are a wide variety of reading technologies available that can take a digital result, communicate to the cloud, uh, take the subjectivity out of result generation, allow for quantification if need be, but I think most importantly in this situation, allow for the communication of results uh, and ensuring that those results are accurate. Um, so that could be, you know, small benchtop readers, they could be small pocket-sized analyzers, they could be cell phone-based apps. Uh, all of these things exist and all of the technology exists behind it to do the data handling, the data management, all of the, the, the HIPAA compliance. It's all done, it's all taken care of. Um, and there's no reason that that cannot be deployed in, in this situation. Yeah, you know, I think w with all these uh, recent improvements of, of um, digital data collection for uh, rapid tests, uh, it's really converged where, you know, this used to be the, uh, the, the wheelhouse of, of uh, central laboratory testing where all that data is captured uh, and, and, and stored uh, and disseminated basically. So now we can take all that infrastructure and we can do it at a point of care uh, scenario where we can take that data, digitize it and then share it for epidemiology purposes and um, uh, for, for future use basically. Yeah. You know, all, all of the work on you know, data management, security, uh, privacy, uh, these are all things that have been in uh, the general thought process for quite some time in the diagnostic community. And there's been enormous advances made in all of those over the last few years, uh, as well as on the hardware side for actually collecting uh, and delivering uh, the results. So I do think this situation is going to accelerate that whole process very, very much so. Um, so again, uh, within a very short period of time, I think we're going to see some much better solutions to, to that kind of data management. Yeah, you know, I think the, the look and feel of rapid testing is going to change drastically uh, over the com coming months and, and, and years. Uh, you know, whereas traditionally you take a rapid test, uh, you run it, you look at it, you maybe scribble down the results somewhere and you throw the test away. Now we're going to uh, do that same rapid testing at the point of care. Uh, and that result will be digitized and, 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 and saved forever, basically.